Hey guys, and welcome to another C++ in game tutorial. Today I'm going to be teaching you about inheritance. And first, to show you what inheritance is, let's show you why we would need it. And it'll kind of make a lot more sense. So if you'll notice, I've made a monster class, and I didn't put it in its own file just because I want this tutorial to be pretty simple. Uh, so normally you're going to definitely want to put it in your own file. So this class monster has a constructor that sets up its name, and it has an attack function that just couts is attacking, and it has a move function that couts oops, excuse me, see how it's is moving. Now we also have in the main function, we are creating a monster and we are calling it goblin. And we also are calling its move and attack function and then ending. So that's pretty basic. It should just print out two things. Let's go ahead and run it. There we go. It says goblin is moving, goblin is attacking. Whatever, that's cool. But what if we want to make a bunch of different monsters? What if we don't just want monster, right? And we don't want to have to keep typing uh, spider, you know, goblin, uh, bandit in here. Uh, th the problem with that is if we have like a ton of properties uh, for each of the different monsters, this monster class is going to get really huge, right? Because the, the spider needs to be able to climb walls, so we're going to probably need to have a method in here that makes it climb walls. We're going to need some variables relating to that. A bandit might be able to rob your money, so we need some variables and functions in here that do that. It just makes more sense to give it its own class. So instead of having a class monster, we would have a class spider that does climbing things and fighting, and a class bandit that, all, that does robbing and fighting. And you'll notice these different kinds of monsters all have uh, some some shared properties. For instance, they're all going to have like an attack value. They're going to have health. They might have a name. So instead of typing string name in all of the classes and, and string damage, or maybe they all have the same attack function, instead of rewriting this attack function, copy pasting it, instead of doing that, we can use inheritance. So I'm going to show you what inheritance is. First thing we do is we make like a main class that we want all of our classes to derive from. And what that means is they are going to inherit from this class. So we're going to make our class called Monster. So Monster is just going to be like a, a general class that has some basic functionality that you would think a monster would have. And then all of our different enemies are going to inherit from Monster. So they're going to get all that basic functionality and then they're going to build on top of it with their own unique methods. So for instance, we can make a Goblin class and a spider class. I'll do that. Goblin and spider. So what we're going to do is inherit from monsters. So I'm going to draw little arrows like this. So if we put a variable in monster like string name, now goblin and spider are both going to get to use string name. We don't have to type string name here again. And if there's a function called, uh, for instance, void attack, if we have that in monster, then spider and goblin will both also get attack. Now, if spider wants to have a unique attack, like maybe it adds poison, it could write attack again and overwrite it, and that would be fine. But it doesn't have to do that. It can use the original attack function if it wants to. So this is a really nice hierarchy, and we can even go further. We could make another subclass that goes even further down the chain, and we could call this, like, uh, goblin archer. Because when you think about it, a goblin archer probably does pretty much everything a goblin does, except it can also shoot arrows, right? So let's go ahead and just do the spider right now that, in, that inherits from monster. So we're going to go ahead and keep monster like it is right now. And let's go ahead and make our spider class, again in the same file, class spider, like that. So this is how you make a normal class, public private. Now if we want to inherit from monster, it's very simple. All we do is go after the name, we type colon, then we type public, and we type the name of the class we want to inherit from, which is going to be monster. So now, spider is a derived class of monster. It's a subclass of monster. So now, it has access to all of monster's methods. However, it needs to implement its own constructor. That's the only thing that you can't really inherit. So we're going to copy this constructor and just, uh, oops, I put it in the wrong spot. We're going to copy that constructor and put it in spider, and of course rename it spider. And what, one more thing we need to do is in our monster class, we have to give it a default constructor that has no arguments, like this. We say monster, and then empty parentheses, and then it's not even going to do anything in the body. We can just put it like that and it won't do anything. Now the reason we need a default constructor is because since spider inherits from monster, anytime you make a spider object, it's going to call the default constructor. Now the default constructor might do something like initialize name equals uh, 
no name or something useful like that, right? So we want the monster to be able to do this. Uh, so that's why you have to have it. Uh, because otherwise this stuff in here that you don't have to declare in Spider may not get properly initialized if you forget to do it in, in Spider. So let's go ahead and, yeah, we'll leave it like that. We'll go ahead and initialize name to no name. That's fine. And right here, you'll notice we're getting an error. It says monster name is inaccessible. And it's, it's pointing to this name at 25. Now, inaccessible doesn't mean it doesn't know it exists. Inaccessible means that this is private and we can't get it. If this was public, we could get it. But since it's private, we can't. Private means only your class can get it. And Spider, even though it derives from it, is a different class. The solution, though, is not to make it public. It's to make it protected. This is a new access qualifier. It's the only one I haven't taught you. Protected. And the only reason I haven't taught it to you is because it's only relevant right now. So this protected qualifier, there we go, this protected qualifier is the same exact thing as private. Nothing outside the class can use it, except for classes that derive from your class. So spider, since it derives from monster, will get access to the protected variable name. And that makes it become basically a private variable in spider, or a protected variable in spider as well. So now we can access it, and now it's going to work fine. So instead of making a monster and naming it goblin, let's make a spider, and we'll name it spider. And let's give him a little name, Bob, like that. So now, Notice we're calling spider.move spider.attack. When you go here, we didn't implement spider.move or spider.attack. They are implemented up here in monster attack and monster move. So let's go ahead and run it and see if it works. And it works. We get Bob is moving, Bob is attacking. So now let's do something special for spider. Let's make a function void uh, climb like that. And we're going to do C out name is oops, name is jumping, like that. And let's see if that works. So let's say spider dot jump, climb. I said climb and then wrote jump. There we go, all right, so let's run that and we should get spider, or Bob is climbing, there we go. So what we did is in our spider class here, we made it a subclass of monster. So it had all of the functionality in monster, and then we wrote its own method that it could use called climb. So basically, we saved a bunch of time having to retype all that stuff that we didn't need to use. And then we also were able to provide our own functionality on top of it. So we can make spider super complex and just have some basic stuff in monster. And then we could have, you know, something that inherits from spider called like spider skeleton rider or something. Like you could get super crazy with this. Now, this isn't the only thing inheritance is good for. There's other uh, useful stuff like polymorphism that we're going to actually go into in the next few videos. So thanks for watching, guys.